Cooking Without Looking, Cape Town Society for the Blind Edition. Good day, my name is Kaila Tukutu and I'm a student from Cape Town Society for the Blind. And today I'll be introducing a meal that my team, Cooking Without Looking, has put together for you guys to enjoy. The meal is Ichakalaka, Omfino, and Oma on the Pombangs. The reason why we show this meal is because it shows how versatile or how different our traditions and cultures are, but at the same time, how can we match them together? Main meal, Oma on the Pombangs. In English, it translates to granny under the blanket. Today, um, I'm Avril Davids. I am employed here at CTSB. I'm a um, Braille and Recaine facilitator. I'm also partially sighted. Yeah, so uh, what I will be cooking today is um, called Oma Wonder Dikombers. Those people who don't understand Afrikaans, what, it, what, the dish, what the dish is all about is a, a meatball which is covered in cabbage. Uh, the cabbage is covering the meatball. Why they call it Oma? Oma is a granny. So, you know, grannies are always cold and they need to be tucked away. So, we tuck the meatball around the cabbage, so we cover her with a blanket. So that is the dish which I will be making today. So the ingredients which you will be needing is our onions, your spices, fish oil, um, lamb pieces, just for the flavor. It's just for the flavor. You can also replace it. You have options. You can replace it either with um, soup bones, you can use about two or three soup bones and that, fl that fl I mean I, also, I will prefer actually soup bones but it cooks actually longer so that's why I didn't want to use it but it, soup bones is very nice with this, for this dish and then we also have eggs which we're going to use for the meatballs the spices are there, here are your mince it's just a half a kilo mince and then cabbage and then also the green pepper and you also need um, garlic. I've already prepared some of my ingredients. This are the cabbage. This is the cabbage which I just um, leave. It's all leaves. I didn't cut it up because this is where the um, meatball will be wrapped in. So you only cook it halfway through so that it can be flexible so when you do wrap it around the meatball it won't break. I've already chopped majority of my onions so now I just need to chop another half and then I will be adding it to the pot. And as I'm chopping I just move my fingers backwards and I let the side of the knife feel against my fingers then I know how far I need to go. So then I just feel if everything has been chopped then I know I can add it to my pot. What I do, I just go along the side of the stove feel where my pot is with with my knife and put my board onto the pot, feeling it's inside the pot. Now I know I won't be messing. I'll just spread it evenly in the pot. Now you just, you have to braise it until it's nice and brown. Then you move on to your green pepper. You slice your green pepper and then afterwards you chop it evenly. Add this with your onions. Once you are done, 
can start cleaning your garlic about three nice big cloves I'll wash it off just rinse it a bit and this you can either grate or you can chop it which I prefer doing to chop you chop it nice and fine I just gather it together and then I will also add this to my onions and green pepper. My onions was nice and brown. And then I added my meat and I added some water so that the meat can simmer through and become tender. Once your meat is nice and tender, Halfway tender, you can then you add your, your your chopped cabbage and your potatoes to the pot. And once that is nice and halfway through, then you can add your oma ono I mean the meatballs and the cabbage, which will which I am busy preparing now. I'll be grating one onion and one when this onion is done I'll be grating also a green pepper and garlic but the garlic I will be grating on the finer side of the grater because it has to be more fine you don't want to taste chunks of garlic in your meatballs once you've completed grating your onions, green pepper and garlic, you can add your statements to it. Now we're adding breadcrumbs, which is a cup of breadcrumbs. And then you also add two eggs just to bind it together. We have our jars here with all our spices in and we have um, labeled them in large print and it's also labeled in braille. So the braille is written here on top, which is easier for us to identify. And now we're adding some salt. You just make sure it is salt. Yes, it is. I'll be adding a teaspoon of salt, pepper. You can either use black, but you have the option black pepper or white pepper. But I'll be using white pepper. You don't know how strong your pepper is. If you don't know, you just make sure that you don't put too much in. You can add either a half a spoon, teaspoon, or three quarter, or a spoonful. It all depends on how strong you like your meatballs. I've got my um, dry parsley. I'll be adding two teaspoons and then you can you have an option to add any other ingredients which you do want to um, I'll be eat I'll be adding just a bit of meat masala just for the taste a three quarter teaspoon I have a little bit of jeera here which gives it just a little bit uh, it will make it more tastier so this is all your ingredients which you need for your meatballs now I will be mixing it through 
with my hand. Now I'm preparing my meatballs. It's just about a half a handful. You just roll it. Put it all on a plate. Which is very much easy, no difficulty. Especially for partially cycled turkey. So, cabbage leaves which I have prepared beforehand, as I told you. I'll be covering granny with a blanket, which means your meatball, you place your meatball on the leaf, you wrap the, the leaf around the meatball. As you can see, all covered up. Which is your Oma Ola Decompares. I've added some leftover cabbage and potatoes. So I'll be stirring it through once it's halfway soft. Once it's nice and soft, I will add the meatballs and the cabbage. The Oma Onde Picombe. I'm stirring my potato and the cabbage through. And now my meatballs and the cabbage are ready to be put into the pot. So, and then one by one. So I'll be doing it clockwise all around the pot so that I can know exactly where, where it is. Um, boil through for about 10 minutes and now I'm going to just stir it give it a bit of a stir I've switched um, off the stove now but I left it on the same plate so that it can just simmer a bit through and voila Oma Ondri Kumbers is klaar. It's finished. It's done. Side dish. Umfino. Um, hi. My name is Akon Njolo. At Cape Town Society for the Blind. In Cape Town, obviously, South Africa. Um, age 27. Partial blind from 2015. Now I'm at the kitchen at my school premises. I'm going to be cooking umfino. It's mostly loved by classes. I'm Kosa too, so I know it from my Eastern Cape area. Umfino, it's a mix of um, um, spinach, cabbage, onion, butternut, and then a little bit of maize meal, I mean a little bit of meal rice and then a maize meal. When it's finished, it's a vegetable pop. You can um you can serve umfino as a as a starter, just something like that, or you can dish it as a main course, umfino and maybe some piece of meat, and then that, that's how you serve it. So today I'm gonna be cooking umfino and chakalaka. So be with me as I'm gonna be doing it. So now I'm gonna be washing my spinach, then chop it. Lucky enough, my spinach is it's clean from the shop, so it's not too much of a dirty. But I'm just gonna be washing it. My spinach. 
when I'm doing my chopping as a partial blind person, I like to put a dishcloth under my chopping board so that my chopping board doesn't move and distract me while I'm chopping. So now I'm gonna start my chopping. My knife is big, you will be concerned. How will this person chop with a big knife that's just blind? It's okay, I can feel it. I'm gonna put my hand down the spinach and then I'm gonna chop the front, chop. The more I go, I remove, um, remove backwards my hand, backwards my hand, backwards my hand, and then it's finished, and then now I can start to chop it. Just like this, so nothing will hurt me. So now I'm gonna be chopping my cabbage. So, this is how I'm gonna be chopping my cabbage. Now I'm gonna be chopping the butternut, which is the most difficult thing to chop. But when you are disabled, like in my condition, being partially blind, you have to be independent. You can't rely on people. I can't do for my mom or for whoever to chop on for me. I must chop it for myself. So I've learned to chop the butternut on my own. So this is how I do it. I chop it on the chopping board. It's hard. I peeled out the peel, so now I'm gonna chop my butternut. So I'm gonna be chopping it. It's not necessary to to be a certain shape because I will mash it. I will mash it because in my movie, you know, the butternut must be mashed. Okay, I've done my chopping. I've done my chopping, so now I'm gonna mix it together in one, one pot. I'm using a, a, a large pot was I like a space when I cook. I like a space more, especially when I cook something to do with maize meal. So I don't like to, to, to cook my meal in a tight pot. So the, the butternuts, it's the first one because it must be mashed. Second one that I should put it's the little bit of maize rice. So it's in in my cupboard this side in the serving so I can fetch it. So how do I know where to get my rice? I know this side in this throw. It's something like rice, main meal, cooking oils. I know this is where I get stuff like that. So I'll just put a half of rice. I don't know why they put a rice first, but I grew up when they cook spinach. I mean, they cook um, you know, they cook it, they cook it, they cook it like this. So I'm following the ingredients. But I think even if you don't have the rice, you can still cook. But I'm following the ingredients that the adults they do from the Eastern Cape where I come from. They do like this. So this is. This is how I learned from my grandmoms. Due to insufficient time, I can just add cabbage now as well. I can just add cabbage now as well. So I have um, warm water that I will put here. I'll put a lot of water so that my veg can just boil, boil freely. My veg can just boil freely. Yeah, so now I'm coming to the stove. And now I'm feeling uh, I'm checking on my pot. I think it's just 15 minutes now. So now I'm checking my pot, how's it going? So in order for me to know, I use a wooden spoon. So I'm mashing the butternut so I can see now it's soft, it's getting mashed. So that means it's soft, so it's made, it's made cold because it's a little bit um, meshing. So yeah, then it's soft, then now I know I can add my cabbage. I'm adding my spinach because already here. 
there's a cabbage, butternut, and the rice. So now I can add my spinach and the, and the onion and my spices and my cooking oil so that it can just boil it all together. Then finally, I can add my maize meal. But when you cook umfino, the spinach must be richer than all the veg because the umfino must be green. So uh, the salt, the, the, um, the aromat flavor must be must be suitable. I don't know how to say it, but one must feel it while you're eating. So uh, put in two full big teaspoons. Now I'm gonna add um, rama. So this rama is, uh, oh my god, I've left my magnifier camera so I won't be able to see this rama's cream. But then everyone, my partner, she can help me to read it. Um, Evan? Yes. Oh, just here. Yeah. Okay. Can you please help me to read this rama's cream? Because I don't you want know. me to read the fine print? Please. Okay, let me see. Oh, it is, yes, underneath. Oh, wow. It's a 250 grams. 250 grams. <laughs> yes. oh. Now I know oh, it's 250 God. grams and it's been used, but I'm just going to take it off. So now I can fill that my, my 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 vegetables. My pot is on point. Everything is right. Even when I'm stirring it, I can feel my wooden spoon is moving nicely and smooth. So now I can add my maize meal. Let me go get my maize meal. One can stay um well one can add the maize milk straight to the pot but there will be clumps. There will be clumps if it didn't stay nicely well. So it depends on how one can stay nicely well. But for me I don't want to take any risk to serve my people a um a young female with the clumps. So I have a boil with cold water, then I'm gonna add I'm gonna add um I'm gonna add my meal meal here in this cold water. Not too much, not too much of meal meal. Just to thicken up, just the meal meal is just to thicken up the vegetable, you know. That's why I'm saying that it shouldn't go like a steak bath. It's just to thicken up the vegetable. So now I'm um I'm mixing my my cold water with my maize meal so that I can just dip straight to my vegetable and then I can just stay it all together and then my fino is ready my bowl is too small then it's not really all right but I'll just add water it's okay so watch me as I'm stirring it so that it doesn't get lumps Strong. As I've just had a um, maize meal in my in my vegetables, then that maize meal, the stove is high, so the maize meal is gonna burn. It's gonna burn. Then I must lower my stove. So the stove was on six. Now I'm gonna lower it to three. Spicy chocolate. As I'm cooking on fino, in my meal I'm gonna also add chakalaka as it is part of the traditional meal. Chakalaka is mostly loved. It's mostly loved. You can go to colored areas, they love chakalaka. You can go to African area, they love chakalaka. Mostly Africans when they do brine, they would um, go for chakalaka, state pop, and brine meat, so they love it like that. 
So it's African style, it's Cape Town style, people they love it. So now, as it is nice, colorful, how am I, how am, how am I gonna do it? You can do it in, in different ways, but this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a mix of peppers, red, to which I've chopped here. Uh, I have red, yellow, and I'm gonna chop my green one, so I have three colors. So I'm gonna do the mixture of three colors, and then I'm gonna have my carrot, which is orange. So you see now I'm having the fourth color, and then obviously I'm gonna have my onion for that nice flavor, and then I'm gonna add beans and chutney sauce and some spices, barbecue spice for the nice flavor. And obviously it's chakalaka, it must be hot. So I will add my peri peris, my hot stuff. So I will add it on my chakalaka. I want all my chili, all my chili spices. So I'm trying to read out here which are the chilies and then I'm just gonna put it up front so that I can set them nicely, the one I want to use. Okay, I've already put on my stuff. So, first put my cooking oil. My cooking oil. Is it bit, I can try to come closer to to see how I put it because honestly I can't tell the measurement. But I can just come closer to see how I put it. My onion. It's it's a, it's a, I think it's a half an onion because I've chopped two onions and I put in wine bowl. Then I take off to the um, to the ufina and I take up to here to, to here for the chicken this chili over pepper this chili powder and this chili flakes and barbecue so I'm gonna take one tablespoon one tablespoon on each one on each one okay not one this not one this one you know it must be half it's gonna be too much hot then it must be half yeah too much hot made so this is chili flakes lucky enough with chili flakes even if you are totally blind you can feel it it's a rough so yeah. with here i'm gonna put a full spoon and then now it's not the barbecue spice so yeah i'm also gonna put to not too full yeah so all my spices i gave in so now I put my onion, my spices. Now I put my peppers, my mixed peppers here. I don't like my peppers to be like to be well cooked. Just want them to be a little bit fried, not to be well cooked because I want them when they like. I like them when they are crunchy. So I'm putting my carrot in my pot. So this is my water to some spoon. Just gonna stir it. So I have my green, my yellow, my red, my orange. All my nice colors are here. To add more flavor, I'm gonna put on chutney, and then I'm gonna put on baked beans and then my chakalaka is finished. It's done like that. I like to put my chakalaka before I put on beans so that, oh, not too much. Right. Since I still have a little bit of vision, I don't measure it, I just dish it, but maybe, I, I can't really tell, I don't want to lie, I can't tell the measurement, but you just, you just pour it and then you can just feel it. You can just taste it and then you know whether you should add more or what. Now I'm gonna add the baked bean in my pot. All my vegetable, all my taste is already on point. Everything is good. So just to add the baked bean for more sauce. So there's nothing here. And then the chocolate is done. So the smell, oh, people can just tell if they can just shout out loud. It smells so nice, so delicious. And then I'm just going to leave it made for two minutes just to, just for the big things to absorb together with my vegetable. 
so that the paper can hold together in one, can all be together in one. Correct. Several getting ready to serve the meal to students. The reason why we have a black tablecloth and white plates so that the contrast can be nice and clear for posh inside the people. Students entering the kitchen to enjoy the meal. Compliments to the chefs. Exactly. Yeah. All that was great, but now for the cleanup, you know that is not the the part which everybody loves. <laughs> And we really enjoyed it. We appreciate it. And thank you very much. Bye. Bye.